Get £300 off your next used car. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to the Football Show. It's Tuesday night. I'm Peter Martin. Delighted to have your company tonight. And joining me, Alan Ruff. And, of course, Hugh McDonald of the Daily Mail here with us. Lots to talk about, especially some of the news today. Yeah, we'll get into Jose Mourinho sacked at Manchester United a little later on in the programme, but uh, first and foremost to matters in Scotland, AGM at Hearts. Uh, and Budge has a lot to be positive about with regards to Hearts, but certainly there are certain things which I think caught a few people on the hop. She will not stand for any nonsense uh, with regards to anyone coin throwing, anyone guilty of any racist or sectarian mm. behaviour and she has threatened to close a section of the main stand unless they clean up their act. Great response. There's been, there's been concern around the fringes of, uh, of hearts and heart support and amongst many heart supporters about an element, how large, who knows, that's, uh, that's come in uh, and, uh, and really tarnished the club's name by their actions and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and their voices. Uh, so this is, a, this is a good, strong response to it uh, from Anne Budge and, yeah, it's just got to be welcomed. Uh, and strangely enough, um, having lived in that city for a long time uh, as well, Ruffy, uh, there was a fire alarm uh, where some of the press were actually out on the, the main thoroughfare of that main stand and some people who were coming down, Hearts fans, uh, were singing unsavoury songs. But it was all young kids, idiots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've noticed that quite a lot. I mean, uh, I know th football's moved on. That I always associate supporters with the go to games and wear the colours of their team. You know what I mean? A scarf or a hat. And the more and more people I see now who are causing trouble at games aren't that elk. They don't have the club colours on. And I'm just wondering whether they just go there and noise up people. Uh, and it's something we don't want to see. And again, it'll be a small... Uh, crowd in that stand but it's the real supporters you feel sorry for because they're the ones that would be punished and you're talking about fire alarms the biggest fire alarm around hearts was the the indication that uh, tommy robinson uh, wanted to go to a game there so he's latching onto it for a reason he sees something there that he could um kind of prey on uh, uh, and i think that sent a sent a whole shiver through all decent heart supporters and the board yeah well I, I, again and i uh, you can't quantify it, but I, I look at the majority of the fans inside that stadium, thoroughly decent people mm -hmm. who will be absolutely 100% behind Anne Budge on this. And true to her word, um, Ruffy, she's revealed the club is on course uh, to pass the ownership to the Foundation of Hearts before the end of 2020. Although I imagine the Foundation of Hearts might want her to stay on for her leadership. Oh, I think that's definitely going to happen. You know, what she's done since she's come in there and then she's organised and steadied the ship and, and taken it forward. Uh, and that's what kind of person he is. I don't think anybody in the game uh, will have a bad word to say about anything she's done. OK, uh, from Hearts, uh, there are football matches to look forward to Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, here's the fixtures. Quarter to eight kick-off tonight. Aberdeen against Dundee. It's Celtic Motherwell and Hibs Rangers on the Wednesday. Uh, and of course, Aberdeen Dundee. Aberdeen got that confidence-boosting win away from home. They've got a run of three games at home now, one of them against Dundee. Uh, it's a match that Derek McInnes revealed they they wanted move because of this fixture pile up. But you know, we tried to get the Dundee game. Um, we agreed with Jim McIntyre and Dundee to try and push the Dundee game back to January sometime when it was a wee bit more respite for both teams. Uh, and the league insisted we played it. So um, it, we do what we told them and we got on with it a bit. You know, it does seem it's a game every three days for my players and uh, it's, uh, it's a big ask on them when we have got so many injuries in certain areas. 
Yeah, starting to feel the pinch. Dundee, Hearts and Celtic all at Pataudry coming up, Hugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, a fascinating, it's a fascinating league. It, it, when, we, when we were sitting at the, at the beginning of the season, could we, have, could we have foreseen that in three days in December there'd be three different leaders of the Premiership, you know, Celtic, then come Marnet and then Rangers. Every game now, every match you look at now, every fixture has got a significance to it. Aberdeen v Dundee. Can Aberdeen, uh, uh, after a, a mediocre start to the season, they're not far off the pace, can they? Is this the sign of them getting back? Dundee coming uh, back to some kind of form, trying to get um, out of that uh, those two bottom positions at the bottom of the league. Every fixture now has a significance, as I say, and a meaning. Um, I can see where Derek's coming from with the, you know, why not put them back? But it's impossible because what it does is it gives, you know, the, the SPFL just say, well, it gives you actually an advantage over your competitors because you're having a free week when, when they're not. So uh, while it might be good in theory and practice, it's just impossible. Do you think they can hold on to Scott McKenna? They're expecting bids in this January window. Well, I think it's the dialogue between the manager and the player. The, the last bid that came in, did the manager say to McKenna, look, if another reasonable bid comes in, we appreciate that you've, you've, you've stayed with us. You know, another one, if it's acceptable, we'll let you go. So I think that'll be the relationship that the two of them will have between each other. Yeah, and you can understand why McInnes is looking towards the likes of Graham Sherry, Gary Mackay, Stephen, and saying, come on, are you going to stay? Are you going to go? Mm. Their contract's up in the summer. You understand that. And, you, and if you're Graham Sherry and you're Gary Mackay, Stephen, you understand their position as well. They're young men, uh, knowing that uh, they have... In certain extent, the whip hand at the moment, they can, uh, they're open to offers only proper for them and their families that, that, that they, you know, they look at these offers and make a decision that's right for them as well. Uh, that's the reality of the modern game. Yep, OK. Uh, two games on Wednesday to look forward to. Uh, of course, Celtic at home to Motherwell, hoping to bounce back after that defeat against Hibernian. Uh, a number of players coming back available for Brendan Rodgers. Of course, Dedrick Boyata, light training for Ryan Christie as well, which will help them as they head up to uh, the winter break. Whether any of those players are able to force themselves right back into his thoughts is another matter. Uh, with regards to his strike, Odson Edward, um, he's the only striker there uh, with uh, Lee Griffiths obviously out of the side at the moment and the manager has mentioned that he would like to have been a little bit more careful with him. If you look at from the summer, you know, we're, we're, we're virtually been expecting a young player of 20 years of age to, to be playing week in, week out when the number of games and it's not possible, you know, you, if you, look, at, you look at the teams like Manchester City and and that with Sergio Aguero, who's one of the great strikers in, in the world. You know, he doesn't play every single game. At times he'll come out and, and Gabriel Jesus will play and and then Aguero comes in fresh. And, and we've been unable to do that, really, with the likes of young odds. And so, yeah, at times he, he's probably been carrying some little injuries and in playing. Um, but there's no doubt he, he's a talent. But I haven't been able to use him as I would want to because of... Uh, that position and where we've been short really so it's been difficult for him because like I said games I wanted to take him out I haven't been able to but uh, but like I say he's a tough boy he's a big talent and uh, and like I say he will need some help in January which we which we know yeah, but he's looking to try and bring players in uh, if Celtic were to lose the league I, I could think of three main issues mm. that has sunk them, to be perfectly honest with you, Hugh. Um, uh, one of them is the board in the summer. Uh, secondary to that, I think Brendan Rodgers has made some mistakes and I think some of the players have switched off. Yep. Um, there's there's uh, um, amazing about... Uh, uh, I mean, it's like every perfect storm, isn't it? There's always different ingredients. I'm just thinking, listening to that, that on the last day of August, um, as the transfer window was closing, Brendan Rodgers had a £9 million centre forward for the SPFL. He had the best Scotland striker and he had a £20 million France under-21 striker. And five months on, he's left with, you know, the £9 million striker, who, after all, is only 20 and is struggling. You know, you could expect to struggle at times. So that shows you how quickly it changed and how... How crucial, you know, certain decisions and certain things that went on in the summer, uh, uh, you know, of impacting on the season. Because in that day in August, you would say the last thing, I, say, I mean, every day, what we were all talking about then was John McGinn 
and a centre half. Yeah. Now it's moved on very much a striker they need. Um, and I'll be interested to, to, to know where they're going for a striker now um, because off the top of my head, unless they get a really, and they, they, they might have this because I've had a lot of time to think about it, a really clever loan signing or, you know, up their sleeves. There's not that many out there that I can think of. Yep. Uh, well, if you can think of one, um, email it to Brendan Rogers. Or maybe he has a list at this moment. We're about to find out. Uh, coming up, we'll hear from Stephen Gerrard and look back on Jose Mourinho at Man United. The Football Show with Alan Ruff, <laughs> Hugh McDonald and myself, Peter Martin. Delighted to have your company. We're heading into the festive period. Let's hope you get everything you wish for at Christmas. Uh, as far as the majority of fans inside Easter Road, they'll be hoping for uh, more wishes coming true with the scalp of Rangers. I'm talking, of course, about uh, Neil Lennon and Ebbs. They'll be on a high uh, after defeating Celtic. But uh, Rangers uh, will go through there uh, at the top of the table, hoping they can build on their advantage. Uh, of course, uh, Stephen Gerrard has been speaking today and he says he knows that his counterpart in the opposite dugout would relish taking the scalp of Rangers off the back of Celtic's victory. I think it's going to be a, a big challenge for us. They're a good team. I mean, they've got good players. Um, we all know that this is the manager's uh, big fixture, Neil Lennon. I'm sure he'll want one over Rangers. So. I think it's uh, got all the makings of an exciting game. You know, they're on the back of a big victory against Celtic, so I'm sure the confidence is high and the tails are up. Um, but we're really looking forward to the challenge. It's an interesting challenge, Ruffy, because mm -hmm. where Hibs were on a high press against Celtic to stop them playing, I wonder what tactic they'll adopt against uh, this Rangers side. Yeah, well, it, I don't think anybody expected that result against Celtic Hibs in and out uh, this year, but the performance was there for everybody to see. Again, I think it'll be similar. Uh, I think they, they want to play a lot of good football. They want to move the ball about. They've got a lot of pace in their team. And Oral Rangers beat Hamilton uh, the weekend there. It was, that was one-way traffic. I don't think it'll be that tomorrow night because I think Hibs have got players in that side that can hurt them, you yeah. know, and uh, particularly in midfield. Yep, of course, uh, the Hibs boss, uh, Neil Lennon, uh, talking after the uh, Celtic game, well aware that it's uh, going to be just as tough if they want to take three points from Rangers. You know, we're not getting carried away. It's a, it's a win. The three points are, are marvellous. Gets us back in amongst it. You know, we've the game in hand on Wednesday, so we've got to try and maximise that. And well, I, I'm looking at Hibs and I'm thinking, can you imagine they didn't have that poor patch or they just couldn't buy a win? They'd be in the mix. Oh, very much so. And, and, uh, and uh, still capable of coming with a run. I think amongst all the sort of mayhem and shouting and bawling that goes, it surrounds uh, Neil Lennon, something that is almost forgotten is that how good a tactician he is, how good a football coach he is. Uh, I mean, against Celtic uh, uh, on, and on Sunday, I mean, his two major principles was right away he exploited the Celtic by three immediately. Yeah. Not just a goal in 46 seconds, but in, in the subsequent two moves. And he also pinned down Scott Brown uh, by, by placing a midfielder on him. And, and what that was, that, that was a, a really positive move from Neil Lane's very aggressive manager. I'll be interested to see how they set up tomorrow uh, against Rangers. I've got no problems with uh, the motivation they've had. They've been really lifted by the Celtic result. And I think <coughs> they've, got, um, they've got enough in there to, to, to go on a run. People forget as well that, that, that um, they've got quite a strong... They were quite a strong pool now. I mean, for example, two of their, their mainstays, McGregor and Hanlon, at the back didn't play on Sunday. So he's brought in Porteous and, and, and Ambrose have uh, done their well there. Um, five or six of the players that played on, on, on Sunday came through the youth scheme as well. So, yeah, um, interest. That's a, we talked about it earlier. Every game's got significance. This is, a, this is a smashing game tomorrow night. You're not moving anywhere away from the telly for that one. Yeah, well, I am. I'm going well, to go to it. Game, right? uh, yeah, of course, Ruffy. Mm. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a, a, a cracking match. And, of course, let's not forget, uh, this is a Rangers side who are now back at the top of the table. It was a one nothing win against Hamilton. They're getting the job done at times, even when they're maybe not firing in all cylinders. Yeah, and I think some of the players have been warned to stop screaming for the 
the rooftops of what they're going to be doing. You know, just take the wins as they come. Uh, another win tomorrow night would, would establish them up there again. Yep. So it's just taking game by game and, and just keeping your feet firmly on the ground and stop. You know, shouting about what you're going to do until you've done it. Yeah, uh, you wonder of uh, all the players he has at his disposal. I know he's got um, a couple of Americans in, and Matt Polster and Andrew Gutman. Um, again, I think he will be looking and trying to duck and dive in the transfer window any spare mm -hmm. cash you can get from shifting players out. One of the guys that he brought in in the summer that wasn't featuring too much was Gareth McCauley, but suddenly uh, the Northern Ireland internationalist has come into the side and uh, he's not only playing well, uh, on his own, but he's helping his teammates. Look, we've got four four good centre backs. You know, Nico came in and was excellent uh, from the beginning. Um, and as we expected, the young boy uh, learning his way, he he, he was going to have that little dip in form. Uh, I always knew as a manager I was going to have to pull him out at, at a certain point and protect him. And he'll come back stronger and improve, and he'll come back and help us again. Joe's coming on loan and being really well. He's put in some really good performances in big games. Um, but he's still young as well. You forget Joe's still 20, 21 as well. So there's no better uh, centre back for them two to learn off than, than Gareth McCauley. And Gareth's took to it like a duck to water, like we expected. Two games against Hibs St Johnston to boot, and then uh, it's Rangers at Ibrox against Celtic on the 29th. Yep, uh, it's a, you know, I know, I know St Johnston took a wee done to the weekend, but it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a testing spell. Um, I think Rangers are, are suffering from the same problem they suffer from all season, is that, that uh, you know they, they lack a little bit of noose in the final third. They lack a you know they lack a number ten for the Lions, and then lack a, a viable backup to Morelis. And, and I would imagine, I mean, it's no secret that that's what uh, that, that's where Gerald will be hoping to to strengthen in the months to come. They'll be hoping that um, that they uh, they can bring in a bit more. Technique in the middle of the field. Stephen Davis is the man that's been mentioned yeah. by many. Strangely uh, enough, Hugh, this is a side that can't. I mean, they, they can't get a run of three, four, five games winning. It's it's usually two, then it's a draw or a loss. They can't mm. get that consistency. I think that's what the manager's craving. But that's the, that's the story of everybody this season, including Celtic. I mean, you know, we're so used to the Celtic. You know, I mean, I, I think there's been so many false dawns for the Celtic sports. I think the 5-1 the defeat of Kilmarnock would have been, ah, oh, that's, that's the old Celtic bank, but there's been stutters uh, since then. And it, it, it's been a really strange league this, this year because we've had teams who have gone on astonishing runs. In fact, Livingston, Hearts, Hibs have all been in great runs. Aberdeen now seem to be coming on a run because they were seventh, eighth at one point. Yeah. So it's been it's been a very. I've found it in recent years in living memory. I think we're going back to, you know, really years ago. Yeah. I think it's been the most intriguing league I can remember. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting one. It's been a while since we've had it like this, uh, switching uh, lead at the top as well. Okay, just briefly then, Ruffy, um, Aberdeen, Dundee, who wins? I think Dundee are still losing bad goals. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go Aberdeen to win that one 2 0. Yeah, I'm going in, in, in the same place. I just think Dundee playing pretty well under Jim Mangtad, but losing bad goals. Hibs Rangers. Hibs Rangers are a fascinating one. It um, all depends. Uh, I'm just so looking forward to this. I think uh, I'm, it could be sitting in the fence, but I think a draw. Yeah, a draw for me as well. Yeah, funny that, Ruffy. Um, uh, and uh, Celtic Mother. Celtic should win. The, the, the performances of at home have been outstanding. Uh, but you just look at Celtic and they are now a team where you cannot really go in 100% faith that they'll get it done. But they should win tomorrow. Yeah, I think they should win as well. But, uh, <laughs> you know what I can with the midweek games and yeah, it's raining oh, yeah, and it's dark. Of course, and uh, and Muller will have the team that keep coming up with these crazy midweek results, yeah. but not tomorrow. Not tomorrow, OK. I knew that was coming. I don't know why I, I waited for it. Um, of course, the big news right across uh, not only England, but right across the globe is Jose Mourinho, sacked by Manchester United.
to win the trophy. I think sometimes to say just to say is not very intelligent, you know. But when you have the potential, you have nothing to hide. Well, there you are. They had the potential. In the end, they couldn't develop it. No. Um, it's a strange situation, but they went backwards, you briefly. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what we remember, it's no surprise, and people can, any the regular viewers of the programme will know we spoke about this beginning of the season. I didn't think it would last to Christmas because it was going to be a battle between him, him and the players, and nowadays the players win those battles. And just briefly, Ruffy, if I was looking at Man United, I'd run Pogba right out of town in January as well. Just a thought. Yeah, well, I think everybody can see his body language. He doesn't want to be there, and I, I bet he has trouble in the dressing room as well. Yeah. Who would you pick for Man United manager? Have you got a po name? Po po Pochettino. Pochettino? Zidane. Zidane. Uh, OK. Um, <laughs> I'm sure those names will be in there as well. Um, you can give us your view on it as well. Thanks to Hugh McDonald of the Daily Mail. I hope he has a great Christmas from Ruffy and myself. Thanks for watching. Get £300 off your next used car. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to PLZ Soccer. Why not join the football family and download the PLZ app? You'll get all the latest Scottish football news and up-to-date news on English and world football. There's also a feature here where you can record yourself talking about your favourite team. If we use the video, you could feature on our football show. For all the latest news in Scottish football, download the PLZ Soccer app in the App Store and in Google Play. Come and join the football family on PLZ Soccer. Thank <laughs> you.